Hey everybody, Wendy Clinky from Blue Cat Studio. Um, happy, what day is it, Tuesday? We are going to work on a multi-day project today. Um, I just got a whole bunch of these cool wooden rounds in. It's like a big 18 inch circle. They make amazing door hangers. And so I figured I would take you through the process of what it takes to make a door hanger like this. And if you're like, oh my gosh, I wanna do that, you let me know, we'll try and figure out how to make it happen. So I'm gonna go through the tutorial. So we'll, we'll begin with some white linen chalk paint and a big old actual painting brush. I'm gonna go ahead and rotate the camera so you can see a little bit better. And so also the things to have on hand, hair dryer, a little bit of black paint and a baby wipe and a ruler. All right, let's do this thing. I'm just gonna go ahead and slap some white paint on, right? Just kind of going back and forth here. Gonna also get around the edges some, but we'll worry about that a little bit more later. Ugh, I got junk. And in this case, I'm gonna water it down a little bit so that it kind of goes on a bit smoother and a little bit more like a wash. That sucker covered, covered, covered. And I'm not looking for the super like thickest of, of coverages on this thing. We're also just as happy. Oh, you can't see my painting, sorry. Um, with a little bit more of that washy look. So again, I'm kind of coming in. All right, there we go. And we're gonna try and keep it as directional as possible. This gets a little bit messy. So side to side and I like it streaky because we're really going to be going kind of for a almost a weathered wood look so grabbing a little bit more of the paint slap a smidge on grab some water to, to soften and loosen it up I'm going back and forth and you definitely need to cover your surfaces when you're doing something like this because it really covers I mean, it's just splashing everywhere, making a mess. And I will, yeah, let me get a light coat on the sides. I'll have to come in and tweak that a little bit. Just going around the edges. Oh, I was like, did I get paint on my seat under where I was sitting? That would be kind of crazy, right? More water here. So again, this is gonna be a multi-day project. Gives us time to get all the things. So today we're mostly gonna just create sort of that background look of white. And then we're gonna get kind of the board, the board lines on it as well. And I'm using a white chalk paint from Rust-Oleum. No, I am not being paid for this. It's just what I happen to have in the basement for a flat or matte white paint. I don't really like glossy um, paint, house paints. I tend to prefer the more matte finish stuff. All right, now that we've got that basic coat down, I have them somewhere. Paper towel, oh, right here. That's what happens when you rearrange your studio. Everything gets somewhere other than where you expected it to be. So paper towel. Hey, I'm gonna go ahead and just give this kind of a wipe down. And yes, I know, we just painted it. And that's gotten sort of goopy, so we'll fold it. And I want it streaky, right? I know that seems strange, but it is the look we're going for. Then I can huge mess. Come back in with just a smidge more, but first we'll offload some of it onto the, there we go. And then some more streaks. So again, we got that nice base coat that's very thin so I can see some of the wood grain underneath. Some of the wood color is kind of coming out. And now, there we go. We're getting some brighter white spots on it. So 
So while this is probably just a big sheet of like birch type of, uh, or even revolution uh, plywood, uh, which you, you know, if you could get some and cut it out, you probably wouldn't have quite as perfect a circle unless you had a circle jig and a router. Um, does that show? Probably kind of here, but it's kind of streaky and stripy, right? That is actually the look we want because then we're going to come back in with some lines to create the board look. Board, B-O-A-R-D, not board like board out of our wits, right? Maybe a smidge more white just for depth. I know you ever think painting something all white could be so much fun? No, not really. Yeah. This part's kind of like the grunt work. So today's the grunt work. But, you know, if you want to do this or even get a group together, share the video. Let everybody else know what we're doing. If you need help with supplies, I have stuff on hand. We can throw together a kit. Okay. I'll pull up the chair again. Hi, kitty. Oh, you can't see kitty. Well, that's cool. All right, I'm going to go ahead and use the blow dryer now to get this a little bit drier. I'm going to move the paintbrush out of the way so that it doesn't get... Um, doesn't get dried and crusted on. Oh yeah, thank you. So just run this sucker real quick. So this is going to be a welcome sign and it's going to be a little wreath of lemons with the words across it. So, um, Hey Vicki, how are you? I've missed you at skiing this year. All right, let's do this thing. So we're going to take this now because my, my stripes are this way and it's a little harder to get to, I'm going to rotate it for now and we will start over here to the left. So grabbing just a bit of black paint, always give it a shake on your non-Fitbit hand. That way you don't get credit for steps you didn't take. All right. And I'm going to go for kind of like a medium. That one is looking awfully beat up. I'm going to get one with a few. There we go. A couple fewer. All right, so we're going for a round or a pointy brush here. Right, where is it? Eep. Okay. I'm going to kind of break it up a little bit, get it a little bit wet, and create a slight kind of wash here. All right, not too, too wet, but we just don't want the paint to be super, super thick. And I have to work quickly here. So let me see if I can tilt this down so you can really see. We're going to create the lines of the board. And you know, they don't have to be perfectly straight. It's okay if things get wonky. Just going to kind of more water here. We want this to be soft. Kind of pull those lines across roughly a little bit thick. There's the first one. You see that? Nothing special. So sometimes a little bit of paint gets underneath the ruler every time you go. Just pull some of that off with your finger. That way you're not inadvertently dragging paint in places you don't want it. All right, here we go. Another line. I'm just kind of using the ruler as a guide. Not seeking perfect, just seeking kind of good enough, we got the idea sort of thing. 
Oh, the other tool I forgot to tell you you need to have on hand is baby wipes. Baby wipes. I haven't used baby wipes on children in donkey's years, but I still continue to have them on hand because they make really great, really great uh, art tools. Okay. And so these also don't have to, so these are simulating boards and they don't have to all be, you know, exactly even in the same size. You can have some that are a little bit skinnier, some that are a little bit wider. Again, just kind of checking the underside of that ruler, getting those stripes in. It's just kind of preliminary. The real magic comes when we break out the baby wipe. Mm -hmm. Whoop. That one got a lot of paint. I'm just gonna wipe it quick. And continue on here. So again, if you're just joining, this is going to be kind of a multi-day piece. Um, we're creating the background today and then try and get on tomorrow. A couple more pieces. So there's going to be the word welcome in the middle and then it's going to be surrounded by a little wreath of lemons. And uh, again, I'm kind of inspired by this because it's a fun design and I don't know about you, but I'm ready to get away from that fully winter feeling. And I so happen to have a whole bunch of these wooden rounds in stock, which means I don't have to be the only one making these if anyone else is interested. Well, let me know when we can put together a kit. And so we, I actually also have a design tracer um, we can use. That way you don't have to worry about freehanding because I know lettering can be a real pain. And you know, perfect lemons can also be a real pain. Not that we do perfect here, but sometimes sketching on the fly, it's not easy. So sometimes it's better to get it right somewhere else and then transfer the outline so you can focus on the good stuff. Hopefully I'm working fast enough here that my paint hasn't completely dried, but it's black. Black is always smudgy, which is, which is good. We want smudgy. Come on. Okay. So now you see kind of like the basic, the basic shapes, right? Um, we have something that roughly roughly looks like wood, especially on camera, um, but the person a little less so. So now it's time to break out the baby wipe. Pray for me here, guys. I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna start to smudge kind of along that, kind of on both sides. Gonna give us a little bit of shading. It's in some places even gonna lift bits of the white. And so we kind of go along the line and then we sort of come out a bit and notice as I sort of curve out, it almost creates a sort of wood grain, simulated wood grain look. And sometimes you gotta kind of swap out and grab a clean spot. And if it gets to be too gray, we can always come back in with just a little bit more white to add some highlights and light and the like. But I'm really liking how this is turning out already. You know, every piece of wood acts a little different. You could do one thing one way and then you come back the next time and do it again and it's not behaving the same. Going for that sort of whitewashed aged wood. And the beauty of using one of these, you know, thin, like quarter inch rounds, I think it is, 18 inch quarter inch rounds, 
is it's not super heavy, so you can easily kind of plop it on a door without, you know, without stressing too much. And so I can just pick up a smidge more of that gray and transfer it to there. Voila. And there you have it. We have a base for a door hanger. Let's see, do we want to add any more white back? You know, I'm going to let this dry and probably take a, you know, think on it. Um, but if we did want to add a little bit more white, if I've got some on here, you could, no, it's getting on towards dry. Could always add a little bit more. So instead of going like whole hog, sticking that thing in the, in the can of paint, I generally try and get just right off the lid of the paint. That way I have just the sort of the, the tips. It helps me control my, t my colors a little bit. So I can just drag little bits of that white through. There we go. So this might actually make a really fun Mother's Day gift or, you know, Mother's Day gift to yourself. Housewarming gift. I don't know. All the things. There we go. Oop, that got a little bit bright, didn't it? Well, we'll just keep working it. Maybe come back with a baby white. Baby white. There we go. All things are fixed with a baby wipe. Yes. Okay. Oh, I see one more spot right up here that needs to be lightened. There we go. Perfect. Or perfect enough. So I think I've talked a little bit about teaching you how to do a traceable design. So I just hand sketched a lemon. I had this whole like cool design and my printer is just like, uh, uh no, mm, uh, not planning on helping you today. So let's talk about how to trace. I have taken this just basic lemon design. I've scribbled chalk on the back. Now you won't be able to see that. So I've pulled some blue chalk. I'm hoping will show better. And so on the back of the design, the part that I didn't draw on, but I can see the lines. I am literally scribbling right over that outline. So this is kind of how we transfer, <coughs> excuse me, a traceable design to a thing. Now I've got a bunch of these in yellow, but there's one that I didn't get placed quite right. All right, so you can see I've scribbled on the back of it. Woohoo! And, <laughs> oh, hey, Shalene, you're gonna put your little one to bed, huh? Oh, what's his name? And so now I have a stylus here. And right in here, I got my thing wonky, so I'm just gonna retrace a lemon and I'm going to place it kind of right here. I want to create a little bit of separation from the edge because there's going to be some designs. Now I'm going to place this down and I'm literally with, you know, you could use the tail of a paintbrush or I have like one of these sort of ball ended styluses, which are fantastic for, you know, like mandala painting, but it just creates pressure came out a lovely blue color. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see here. Hello. Nope. Oh yeah, almost. You can barely see it, but there's a lemon there. And so this is the old fashioned way that we do this when technology fails us. Um, and because, you know, I had to hand place all the lemons and you know, it's just like me to not place them quite right. Doing the chalk is going to be a lot better than trying to use graphite paper. Where'd I put my thing? Okay. So first and foremost, we're going to paint these lemons white. There are six other lemons on here, so I'm not gonna make you watch me do them all. And take my sleeves off so that I do not get them covered in paint. I like my sweater. And we will take a, what's a good size brush? Grab one from the stash. So I'm gonna go with a slightly larger square brush. It's not quite an inch, maybe three quarter inch. It's brand new, still crunchy, so I just kind of give it that decrunching. And let me try to 
turn this thing on. I'm going to grab a time lapse while we're here because this might be really fun to watch in, in full speed later. All right, so just kind of painting the white in first over the, the, the outlines so we know where the lemons are. You're probably like, why are you painting it white first? Well, lemon yellow is pretty much the worst color paint to ever use on anything. It's beautiful, but it takes like 20 coats. Worst coverage. So if we just take a few uh, shortcuts here by doing the white, nice opaque. So I'm using a titanium white. In fact, I think today, most of the paints I'm using are from Blick. Aw, oh, Shalene, what's your son's name? We can say hi to him. And then I got the first one done and I'm just gonna go around, do the first round, and then we'll come through and do another one. Again, just getting that basic coverage, and if we don't get it quite perfect, we can always mess with it, kind of get it right. I don't know, I'm really excited about this one. Now, this is not a Blue Cat Studio original design. This is one that I am licensed to use from Southern Adornments. It's really beautiful stuff, so I pretty much the minute I saw it, I was like, oh yeah, my folks need to see that. It is so much fun. And we can totally, totally, totally do a class on this if you want one. Or you can just, you know, go get your stuff and follow along. There's a bunch of ways to do this. If you need materials, you let me know. Obviously, I have everything we need. Liam! Well, hey, Liam. How's it going? I'm very excited that you're watching us tonight. Oh, you're three and a half years old? Wow, very cool. We're painting lemons today. I don't know if you've ever sucked on a lemon, but they are super, super bitter. Everybody else out there, say hi to Liam. All right. Or actually, maybe not. We're trying to get him to settle, settle down and go to bed. Again, this lemons thing is a multi-day project. Although I tell you, I get so excited. I just want to do the whole thing tonight. But again, I'm really not the queen of hand, hand scripting or hand lettering. So I'm going to have to hop into my printer and figure out how the heck to make it work. It just up and quit working on me. It's my little workhorse and it's like, you're done. So we'll get the lemons and the wreath in and then we'll sort out how to do the lettering another day. Even if it takes me like a few days to hand write this thing and get it right, we'll do it. All right, so again, just getting the lemons coated in white first and foremost, because yellow is awful. It's beautiful, but it doesn't cover anything. And you know, if you've done a number of my tutorials where we've had to use what white or white, where we've had to use yellow, I often will have us do a coat or I'll mix so much white in with a yellow that it just gives a slight yellow tone. So that's probably what we'll do for the next coat is create a really pale yellow. Um, I did that when I was doing the bunny, the bunny painting. You guys have seen the bunny, right? Got two of them now. But in order to get this crazy bright yellow, Oh, Liam, I know, I can't hear you, but you can see me. So if your mom types fast enough, then I can answer if you have questions. <laughs> Poor mom. <laughs> Has Liam done any of our paintings with us? We gotta come up with some good kid ones that are fun and achievable. All right, and if you're just joining Blue Cat and we're new to you, welcome, welcome. 
my goal in life here is to teach you how to paint and give you that opportunity to flex those creative muscles that you know are there, but sometimes life tries to kind of take away from you. We are all about making art easy and fun and accessible, where you work on cool projects so you have major bragging rights and you feel good about what you're doing and all the good things. All right, so that's the first coat. And since we all don't have all day, I'm gonna break out the hair dryer, get it dry real quick, and then I will mix the next round, which is the pale yellow, before we do the final yellow. Goodness, Shaleen, that totally like melts my heart to know that my biggest fan is three and a half and he loves it. <laughs> ah, we'll definitely have to work on some good kid paintings. Just for Liam. Do you have to tell me his favorite things? Do we need to do like a monster truck or what? Okay, so I'm gonna grab a big hunk of this yellow and just kind of smush it together with a white. See how much white I can get in there. Again, this is not the final yellow that we want, but this is how we actually make that yellow work for us. All right, I'm gonna start here and just get that coverage. And it's not, oh yeah, oh my goodness, I love this color. And so some of the edges are a little funky here. We'll do our best to kind of smooth it as we can. But we will be coming over this again a little bit later. We'll get some uh, paint pens to help finish some of the edges. Unless I feel like brushing it. I'm not 100% sure where my head's at on that one yet. But that's okay. I don't have to think about it until at least tomorrow. I'm going to Scarlet O'Hara that one for now. And rotating. Just getting that coverage in. I think I'm gonna be hanging this on my front door. I don't know, last year I had sort of this super ugly, <gasps> cars, cars. That used to be my favorite movie, it still kind of is. Although prior to that, my favorite movie was of course Hook because my cousin, Ben, your big brother, used to love Hook. He'd run around the house yelling bangerang. Mm-hmm. So to this day, I still say bangerang, thanks to that movie. Okay, so I'm totally laughing out of the blue, you guys, because she just said her three and a half year old son is telling mommy to be quiet so he can hear the painting tutorial. <laughs> That's wonderful. Yeah, Ben, I think you might also uh, were one of the one of the ones who were introducing me to it. Like that one time we came and stayed at, at your family cabin on the lake. I think we watched Hook a lot. That's crazy. At then I was 17 and your and Zach was 10 and you were like three. And like the cutest thing in the spitting image of Grandma Grace. Rufio slippers and the pan sword. Oh, Rufio, Rufio. Yes, yes. Oh my goodness. You know, to this day, because I have kids, still mostly what I watch is kid movies. And it's like some of my, my adult friends who don't have kids are like, you're so boring. I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> These kid movies are so good. Has anybody seen like the recent live action Mulan? It was great.
All right, we are just getting this yellow coating done. Whoops, gotta mix some more. And again, it's just a healthy dose of this bright primary yellow by Blick and the titanium white. I'm a huge fan of titanium white because it makes all things better. So if you're ever, you know, trying to paint something and the paint is going on really thin and watery and it's kind of making you mad and you don't like the way it looks, Temper it with a little bit of titanium white. Oh my goodness, these lemons are making me so happy. <sighs> Anyways, yeah, so temper it with a little bit of titanium white um, and it will just like bump the, uh, the opacity like through the roof. And it'll go from being like watery and not see-through to, well, way better. Way, way better. So there's a big word for you, Liam, opacity. It's, it sort of comes from the word opaque, which means you can't see through it. So water is transparent because when you have water in a, in a cup, of, in a glass, you can see through it. But if you have milk in a glass, you can't see through it. So milk is opaque. Hopefully that explains it. There you go, mom. There's your, uh, <laughs> There's your big word lesson for the day. So if it's see-through, Liam, it's transparent. If it's not see-through, it's milk, it's opaque. All right, this last bit of yellow in, we're gonna break out the handy dandy hair dryer. That is like the one styling tool I actually know how to use, not to style, just to dry. I have a crimping iron. I would just burn my hair with it. I have owned a number of curling irons throughout my life. Zero success. So, you know, in my world, hairstyling tools are for art and not in my hair. All right, so there we go. We've got our first base coat of, of lemons. I do have a little gap here that's actually on purpose. Let me go ahead and grab the hair dryer. Like I said, dry it off real quick, or at least get it drier. So I do have this thing on the highest setting. Yes, I do. And it's not a problem. I've seen people use heat guns. I don't like that because I would burn it. But oh, no way. He said, <laughs> did he say transparent and opaque? Ha! See, talk to kids like they're adults. Crazy what happens there. Okay, so now I'm coming back in. Um, over this pale yellow that we created with the white and yellow with just the pure quote unquote primary. Now different brands have different, um, th they're so different. So I've got, you know, a Deco Art Americana in primary yellow and it's, 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 it's a, so this is a cool yellow, right? It's very bright and well, lemony. Whereas other yellows might be more, is daffodil the right term or buttercupish or dandelion-y? This is not so dandelion-y. And so, you know, no matter what paint you're getting in terms of yellows, just make sure that it's that bright, nearly electric-y yellow. First, when I pulled the thing out, I was like, is this, is this fluorescent? I bet you if I shone a black light on this, it would be like, pow. There's another word for you, Liam, fluorescent. Fluorescent means extra, extra bright. And in fact, if you take a black light and shine it on something, it'll kind of almost glow in the dark. That's what fluorescent means. More big words, mom. You're going to hate me or love me. I'm not really sure. I should grab something that's an example of fluorescent. Like this here 
is fluorescent. Look how bright that is. Oh, it doesn't even show how insane it is on camera. In real life, it's like, pow. All right. Anyways, for those of you who are joining me, you're like, why is she talking like we're kids? Because I have a three and a half year old who is insisting on watching this instead of going to bed. So I figure we might as well engage him and start him young. All right. So here's a question. Since my whole template thing and I was having all my technical issues and still am and we had to hand jam all this, I could still write the word welcome in the middle, but is there a different word I should put in instead? Or a phrase? Of course, it couldn't be too big because then it would be like, oh, Anna. So this is going to be um, like a thing that you hang on your wall. Whoops. Like so. Um, and I'm going to have like leaves and vines. And I was planning on having the word welcome in the middle. And then maybe putting a bow on it. So a door decorator. And really, I'm doing this to teach you guys how to do it. Used to be, I'd be like, I'd take commissions, but I'm like, man, nobody got time for that. I'm going to teach you how to do it, and you do it, and you can have your own bragging rights, because it's way more fun that way, right? I mean, it's one thing to buy it from someone. It's a whole other thing to make it. Although, honestly, sometimes we all don't have time for those things. But this is a fun one. And because we're breaking it down in short little bits each day, I think it's very doable. Oh, he knows fluorescent. Cool. Well, that's good. So we already got some. You're going to Fort Grandma? Let me see if I can see more here. Trying to see comments while I'm painting. Oh, of course, fish tanks. Okay, we'll see. I forgot about the whole fish tank thing. I don't think I ever had a black light in my fish tank, but then again, I, I don't know. I had a fish that lived to be 10 years old. Yeah, I got him in college. I was so sad when he, when he finally died. But I didn't just have him in college. I had him like in grade school and high school and college. His name was Oink. He's like, I have the best name ever. All right, good night, Liam. All right, we're almost done with the lemons and then we'll come in with some leaves here. Just gonna freehand this. Again, I have this whole lovely traceable design, uh, which I'll probably make available. but I could not print it. So we are not exactly making things up as we go, but kind of pulling it together, best effort. And again, this is a multi-day project. So if you missed day one, uh, that was on, what is it? Tuesday? What's today? Thursday? I think go live Wednesday. Yeah, Tuesday. Um, I, I demonstrated how to take a plain, you know, piece of wooden wood and paint this whole design so it looks like a palette board, but it's not. And it's really nice and lightweight. It's like quarter inch or five millimeter um, ply. So it'll hang gently on a front door with a basic wreath hook. You don't need anything extra or exciting or special to make it work. Now I'm just gonna come back in. There's a few spots where I feel like the paint is still just a tiny bit thin. Just kind of fill it in a little bit. Since these are pretty much 100% free handed here, obviously with a little bit of design help, but all hand painted in, this is going to have that really handmade uh, look and feel. And I love that because it just is so unique. You know, it's so easy to go to Michael's and spend 50 bucks on a thing, but it's just nowhere near. It's like cool. All right, so I'm going to offload a bunch of. I'm, Bunch of my my the paint from my brush I'm just ugh, making a mess on the stuff so that I can rinse it without just completely messing with my water 
break out the dryer, dry this, and then we'll come back in and do some leaves. about the word home or even home sweet home and then I started thinking about lemonade maybe 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 we'll see I'm gonna have to I'm gonna try to make pull this out because I'm not happy that my printer's not working it's gonna be a problem but that's all right we'll figure something out okay next where I put them next colors we have are Oh, I'm supposed to get the Hauser light. There it is. It's hiding. That's not my Hauser. You know, I try to prep and then I just grab the wrong thing. No. There it is. Okay, I guess, well, those don't really look that much alike, but I thought they did. I was just so excited to go live. I just grabbed the light green that was slightly murky and the dark green and didn't grab the exact ones I wanted. Okay. So we have a, an Americ Americana Deco Hauser light green. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, plus I'm in backwards, so that's fine. Just squeeze a smush of that. And then I've got kind of a dark and a medium. I'm going to start with the dark and see how that goes. And if we decide we want a lighter tone, we'll do a lighter tone. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. And so we're going to do two sets of leaves here. And I'm thinking... Well, there's a good guy. All right. So I've got a kind of a, a round brush here. And um, we'll start with a light just going to add some uh, some leaves, just kind of real basic. Just kind of fill it in. And on most of these, we'll be doing, you know, two leaves. We'll do one light one and one dark one. Oh, that's really great coverage right there. I don't know if you can see that, but it's a single coat. Hallelujah. I love a single coat. So on this one, I think I will have a leaf kind of coming off over here on this side. And we're going to try and make these leaves a little bit different on each one. So I'm always trying to have kind of one big and one little to kind of keep, keep it flowing, keep it... Yeah, shifting and not creating a full pattern. I'm always all about not quite creating a pattern. So you can also get these almost like big table round things from from Lowe's. Um, although kind of not the biggest fan of those because they're super heavy. And so they, they're really hard to hang on, on a door. Now, if you want to turn it into a Lazy Susan, by all means, go for it. But that's a bit harder to do. All right, so instead of, you know, swapping brushes and swapping colors, I'm just going to go through and get as much of this sort of Hauser Light Green stuff going as I can. And so I'm also trying to do kind of like tip to tip, leaf to leaf, tip to tip, leaf to leaf here. <laughs> Let's do the one here. Getting a little patterny. I'm kind of going in, out, in, out. A couple of spots on this that are. Oh no, I grabbed the dark! Duh, Wendy. That's fine. 
just gonna go right over it with a light, mix it in, and if it blends a little, no big deal. Okay, perfect. Come back in. It's gonna say something. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So like, there's a couple spots on this where where the wood is a little bit rough. Perhaps I could have sanded it, I don't know. This was one of those like, ooh, this is a cool project. I'm gonna do it right now. You know, like ADHD, I can't possibly wait, you know, one more day. Uh, so I didn't sand it as well as I should have. Um, but I think once I go over this with um, so a, a finish, uh, indoor, outdoor kind of like sealer, that should be, that should be fine. It won't be a big deal. So leaf to leaf, leaf to leaf. Okay, we'll get a leaf here. Mm, I'm gonna change my mind on you. I'm gonna change my mind. Yep, I'm gonna change my mind. I want a leaf. I want a leaf here. That's fine. I'm gonna break the pattern a little bit. Again, just getting that color in. It's a nice kind of subdued green. You know, it's so tempting when we do leaves and foliage to go for like the brightest, screamiest, happiest green. I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm always like, that's the green, that's the green right there. We love this. And it's just, mm, it's amazing for some things, but not necessarily lemon leaves. Just make it a big fat chunky one. And again, if your leaves get weird, Come back later and fix them. It's no big deal. Here's how I do it. I will put a leaf on this guy. Oh yeah, okay, here we go. Boink. So tomorrow we'll come in, or whenever it is, either tomorrow or Saturday, we'll come in, we'll do the, the overlay details, because there are going to be more details to this that really kind of pull the whole composition together and make it, you know, go from, oh, that's nice, to, dang, you made that? And that is the effect that we are looking for, for you, so you can get your massive bragging rights, right? Oh, yeah. I'm here for you. I am all about... Making sure you got bragging rights. All right, big fat chunky leaf on this guy. Now the real challenge, I don't know about you guys, but me and ribbons and bows, we, we do not exist in the same plane. So it's gonna be interesting trying to add like a ribbon or something fruity to this to make it extra cute. <laughs> I have no idea how I'm gonna pull that one off. And so as a reminder, if you're like, oh my gosh, I want to do this project, share the video with a friend, get your friend excited, you know, do it together. This is a totally fun project to have, you know, a couple people do. Um, then you all can have something to, to brag about. You can share paint, which will help, you know, save on costs if you're going out and getting this stuff. Um, Cause you certainly don't need an entire bottle of this. I probably just one squeeze, right? I mean, not that it's expensive, it's like three bucks a bottle max, big deal. But it adds up, you know? Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes like I see a project, oh my gosh, I really wanna do that project. It looks so amazing. And you know, it would cost me, you know, 40 bucks or 45 or 50 bucks to buy the thing from the person. But after I've gone out and bought all the materials, it's cost me like 80 bucks. <laughs> or uh, there's gotta be a better example than that. All right, let's go for the dark green. But I do, I see that all the time. Like I'm like, oh, that looks so amazing. And I could do that. And after I buy all this stuff, I'm like, I should have just paid that person to do it. <laughs> I just saved like 40 bucks. Anyways. Uh, so if you're interested again, I can always pull together a kit for you. Just let me know. I do have a whole bunch of these wooden rounds. Um, and I'm just going in doing the, the, the darker green leaves. It adds a nice contrast. This stuff has, it's it's a little, it's not quite, it doesn't have quite as good a coverage as the lighter, but it's still good. So we'll do the base coat and then come back. And if, if it seems like it needs it, we'll add extra. Maybe just kind of where those um, 
those gray lines are. one I'm gonna put the leaf over here as much as that seems weird it would be weird coming out the other side so it's gonna be a little bit of your judgment you know wherever you've placed the leaves where where does it look best to put the second one and again I don't know if it's the file that won't print or if it's my printer that's like being a little, a little pain in the butt um, I can make the I can make the printable available if you guys want it. Maybe somebody else will have better luck. I think this one I will put the leaf here. Just kind of kind of really end up a little bit behind that second one in there. So yeah, good suggestions for inside this wreath. We could write the word home. Well, I do like that, Andy. It would be four short, simple letters. I might even be able to hand letter that. Or we could do uh, welcome. Um, anybody else have any ideas about what we could put in there? Rotating. See how those things are starting to come together? And again, it's the finishing touches that we'll do tomorrow that I think will really just because uh, we're going to add some some outlines and some lines inside each of these. And I just got a simple, you know, round brush right now. I used a larger brush for the lemons because it's a lot of paint, a lot of coverage. here on camera so you can see. Still in the process of reworking my studio. And it's funny, I got a desk and I said to my, like this cool, and it goes up and down. I said to my kids, oh yeah, you know, it'll be so awesome because then, you know, like we can finally have the, the kitchen table back. And then I got this and I'm like, oh, well, you know what? Oh, love, that's a good one, Andy. And spring, oh, I didn't see that. I love it. You know, we could also just do hello. Anyway, so I told my kids, oh yeah, you know, we'll finally be able to get our kitchen table back. Super excited. And I'm like, oh, well, now I can stash all the stuff on the kitchen table and I have a workspace. Wah, wah. <laughs> Ah, so clearly I need to do a little bit more optimizing. But it's been so nice to, to have a, a better space where I can leave some of my, you know, my lighting and all my camera and phone stands sort of in place. So I can just show up and turn it on and not have to figure it out every single time. Oh, sorry, I'm getting all distracted by my leaves. Guy here, we'll put a second leaf. I'm hoping my paper table cover here isn't super noisy and driving you guys nuts. Sometimes I go back and rewatch, I'm like, oh my gosh, all I hear is rustling table. Got a lot of good options for what to put on this. Maybe I can make my Cricut print it for me on like a piece of paper with a pen if I can't get my regular printer to work. Something, because all right, that leaf doesn't that look looks dumb. I'm gonna have to fix it a little bit here. My goodness, we've done all the leaves. All right, I'm gonna go through and do a little second coating because this is very see-through and I'm not liking that wash look. Should be pretty quick. 
And then we're going to add just some fun vines for details. It'll be sort of a squiggly and then we'll add some leaves. It's a really quick, very simple technique. All right, here we go. Now some of this wood is very thirsty too. It's like, hello paint. <laughs> Sucks it up. It does take a couple coats. Rotate, rotate. Yeah, that's better. Sorry, I know, second coat's not always the exciting part. All right, so how about this? I'll just swoosh a little in here and I can always do touch-ups offline because y'all don't have time for that. Let's get to the good part. Is this thing wiggly? Is it gonna fall off on me? Don't you dare. All right, so I'm gonna take this guy and twist it. In fact, I'm gonna grab a little bit, so I'm gonna grab a little bit of water from the from my water thing. And just kind of put it in a second one. Just a few kind of drops. Let me spread it out. I don't want too much water in the beginning. And then I grab a blop of paint and put it in the water. So we're one, so I'm looking to have a little bit wetter paint so that, so that it flows and so that I can get longer, smoother lines instead of broken lines. Because when the paint is too thick, it, um, it kind of, the lines break and then it ends up getting kind of messy. Hey, Shaleen, you're back. All right, so here we go. We have the leaves on and now we are going to, where can I start from? I'm gonna start over far because this is kind of the easiest spot. So twist the brush to kind of get a little bit of a, little bit of a point. Not on a crappy brush, but trying to keep the, the bristles from, from splaying and have them come back together. And we will just do a swirly here, swirly, 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 and around. All right, it broke a bit, but that's no big deal. I can come in and kind of fix it very rough textured surface right here. We're just gonna do some fun lines and make it, gonna make this work. So we want each of these lines to be just a little bit different. There's some on the inside, some on the outside. Have some very animated conversations going on upstairs. I think someone is gaming and talking with all her friends. Boop. Okay. So you can see we're starting to have these kind of fun vines. I feel like this is a big empty spot. I'm going to put another one in there because, you know, my sense of balance is offended by the gap. Again, I'm really relying on the, the water that I added to that to, to help smooth it so I can get a cleaner line. A little bit more water here. Mixy, mixy, mixy. And again, twisting and twisting that brush to maintain as much of a point as you can. And it will make a swirl that kind of goes out this way. way and this is an opportunity to just kind of have fun with it and do whatever you know there's no there's no right answer for this one although there is the right amount of water which I don't apparently have just now Boop. And so this bit of paint, it's okay if it goes on a bit thinner than the leaves. Because what, um, vines do tend to have kind of a, a wispier look. Although I'm not liking some of these broken, there we go, that's better. 
And again, we're going to add some leaves to this, so it will it will come together a bit further. Um, here. So we want a little something coming this way. starting to get actually it feels like this is the bottom I don't know so this is what happens when you kind of hand put it on instead of using the pattern stuff feels a little bit off or maybe it's the camera angle I can't really tell whatever we're gonna pull this off so I'll just go back in some of that green and so on a brush like this this little metal part is called the ferrule oh, my lighting is weird okay ferrule and then of course we have the bristles so I'm gonna add the leaves kind of from the ferrule to the, to the, the bristles. So I'm gonna stick the bristles out a bit from the center of the vine. And I'm gonna try and let the ferrule meet, ferrule, whatever, bleh, meet the vine. So just kind of coming around like so, adding leaves. Now, if you wanted, you could actually make those all lined up. That could be fun. I'm just for now going to alternate them since that's what I got. And you know, as things go around a curve like this, it's harder to have a leaf in the inside. So do your best. And we're just going kind of with that squishy brush, br squishy brush shape. And for the most part, it works. It's a really fun technique. There we go. A little extra leaf going on there. Let's make it bigger. There we go. Boink. Just kind of coming through. I'm kind of wondering about making these opposite each other. I'm going to do one like that. Oh, I like that better. All right, well, hey. To come in and maybe add a couple opposites on these guys to Make it make a little bit more sense where I can. Yeah. I'm just gonna place those leaves, boop. And so if you feel like you're, the, th the vine is going around a curve and it's too hard to get a leaf on the inside, skip it, right? Perfectly okay. Whopping down a whole bunch of those leaves. So just place. And if you feel like the brush is leaving kind of a funky shape, you can always come through and smooth a little bit after. But for the most part, these leave it's gonna work fun making some buzzing. They leave a pretty good uh, a pretty good leaf shape, so. I like them. There we go. We're getting there. Hey, Shalene, is, is Liam still there or is, is that little boy finally going to bed? All right, here we go, boink. Adding those leaves. Okay. Just trying to hammer through those leaves quickly as possible. I know there's so many to go. I sort of figure you kind of have the, the idea, right? So we now have this really sort of filled out lush, lush look going on. 
No, it's Liam and Mommy. Well, all right then. <laughs> so, Liam, I'll make you a deal. I'm going to finish these leaves here on the vines, and then we are going to log off for the night, which means it's bedtime for you, buddy. And then we'll come back again another day soon, soon, soon to add the next set of details. And those will be the lines that make the lemons and the leaves go pop. I love that word, pop. And then we'll also paint in the lettering. Now, if you're doing leaves, you do not have to do them as thick as I did. You could totally go sparser. This is an opportunity for you to kind of Choose the aesthetic that works best for you. I just have a thing for like these kind of leaves. Like one of the cactus paintings I did has this whole vine of them. And I just, I love them. So sometimes I tend to incorporate these um, into, into some of the designs. I just love them. Oh, Shalane, I can't wait to see the picture of Liam. But, that's so cute. Thank you, Anna. I saw your comment. The so last year, my spring wreath is like this thing I decided to spray paint white, thinking I would put seashells on it, and then I lost steam, and then I stuck some Dollar Tree pink flowers in it and it was kind of ugly and I can't bear to put it on my, can't bear to put it on my door this year. So kind of looking forward to hanging this guy or something kind of fresh and unique and, you know, bragging rights. Aw, he likes it too, huh? I'll have to get him a lemon and then he can do lemons. One more vine after this. Yes. It's not that I'm trying to be done. I just get so excited to like see the finished result or the halfway finished result, you know. So then these loops, they mess with me a little bit. So, you know, oftentimes for a loopy thing, again, it's hard to get something in the middle. So it's okay to go around the outside and then occasionally just put one in, on the inside. Even that it's a little busy, but it's okay. And so there we have kind of the beginning of this thing. And, uh, and we are completing the uh, welcome lemon sign I just finished tracing. And so we're gonna work on the letters today. Let's go ahead and check, make sure that those letters transferred okay. Make sure if there's any spot that needs a little extra something. So I finally got my printer to work, which meant I could get the words and uh, have some graphite paper down. Although I normally use chalk, the chalk wasn't showing up and you know I'm gonna mess this one up if I don't get it right. So. All right, we are looking good. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that. The words might be a little bit difficult on your end to see. I'll bring it up here so you can catch it. Yeah, you can kind of see the words welcome. In fact, let me, let's see, can I, can I swap us around so you see me not mirrored, but actual, actual? Does it work? Boom, there we go, okay. Now no longer in mirror, so the words will make more sense as we go. Ta-da, welcome. Okay, so we'll go ahead and do some quick painting on that or at least blocking it in. I think I'll block it in, whoops, with a paint pen and then come back. So I'm also gonna get a time-lapse going here, maybe. Um, sure, or not. 
All right, it's gonna be an upside down time lapse. Sweet, this will be awesome. All right, let's do this thing. And I'll put this guy down. Bear with me, sometimes getting everything going all at once, more than my little brain can handle. So I'm just gonna trace in the word welcome. Now sometimes paint pens can spit a little bit, so I'm going as gently as I can, just getting that outline. And if you don't have a paint pen, you can of course always use a brush with normal paint, or you can fake it till you make it with a Sharpie. No shame in that. So the other thing I decided that since I did kind of hand get these lines on and I didn't see it real well until after we painted it, that as much as I wanted the boards to be side to side, it did not seem balanced. And so turning it sideways so that the boards were up and down gave better balance. So that's what we're doing here. So it's not a mistake that my boards are up and down or it's me compensating for a mistake earlier. How about that? Just kind of jamming that in. And these are acrylic paint pens, a whole stash of these. I use this and the brand Artistro. In fact, we'll break out the big fat Artistros in a minute. I'm obviously not super concerned about the insides of these letters right now. Whoops, that is spitting. So when using a paint pen, you always want to pull. If you push, it's gonna spit little black dots everywhere or whatever color you happen to be working in. All right. I don't know about you guys, but I am darn happy it is the weekend. We definitely needed that. Again, this is kinda just the basics. And while I could have done this offline, I also feel like it's it's a good opportunity for you to see, you know, kind of exactly the process and how this is done so that when you go to make your own, you're not sitting there second guessing, oh, am I doing this right? Is this what's supposed to happen? Um, what am I supposed to do next? Um, and so I'm really trying to just sort of peel back the curtain, so to speak, so you can see. Now again, you don't even have to use a paint pen, um, but I do find it's just going to help me a little bit with my edges so I can then kind of come back in and fill it in quickly with a paintbrush. I'm seeing it as just kind of like a helpful shortcut. And I'm a little mess here on this one E, but no big deal. As long as I can keep the mess on the inside. Got a cat howling in the background. How about you? But the other night, I heard this just mournful yowling coming from downstairs. I thought, oh my gosh, what is that? Who's, who's crying? Wow, what's happening? It's my cat. And I see her like playing with this thing. I'm like, oh my God, she brought a mouse in the house. Ugh, gross. And I'm feeling sad for the ant, the mouse and all the things. And then I go down to investigate and she's crying over a pipe cleaner. It was a pipe cleaner. And, and she's done it like a couple nights in a row. And I'm like, a pipe cleaner, really? That, that, that's what you got? Okay. She's weird. So that's Snickers. Okay. Good. Well, we've got that, that outline in. So we'll, let's do the good stuff now. We'll take a quick break from the welcome. I will paint that a little bit later. But first, we'll just get these going. So what I have here are two sort of batter tipped uh, paint pens. It might take a minute for them to activate. So either the wide tip. Oh, hello, lighting. Um, as opposed to the thin tip. So to activate these things, really the nicest way to do it is to kind of press them against their own lids. And sometimes you gotta hold them down, there's a lot of shaking. I know I've got active ones somewhere, but I couldn't find them. So again, shake, whoops, shake, 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 shake. 
activate, activate. You can also activate against the table or whatever. And again, it does take a minute for that paint to come in. Oh, please. Don't mess with me right now, paint. We're trying to show the thing. All right, let's see here. Push, push, push. And if you're gonna shake it, even if you have the lid off, make sure that you're shaking it elsewhere. All right, the white is starting to activate. That's good. Come on, I need the black first though. All right, one down, oh, and the black is coming in too. Perfect. A little bit more. Uh, come on. Almost there. Come on. Come on. I know you can do this. And so we do want the slightly thicker one because it'll give us a wider line. And it's just, and it's real smooth and I don't have to stress about some of the other details. So instead of going exactly outside the lemons, I'm going to do some of this, these lines just kind of inside the lemons and I'm not going to worry about it being a full, a fully connected black line, just kind of doing some broken lines like so. So we're going to continue that. Doing the leaves, boop, a little bit here. Maybe the occasional line down the middle. Not always, like so. And we want that point to kind of meet. A little bit of lemon here. Get the leaves. kind of fun with the with the outlines inside the inside the design I think I'm gonna kind of edge those leaves around here there we are and again so we're leaving just a little border there and do it again. This part is fun and easy, especially if you have the medium points. These are two to three millimeter water-based paint marker pens from Artistro. See how that's adding just a lot of really pretty detail? It kind of takes it from, oh yeah, you painted some yellow blobs to, dang girl, that looks good. If I do say so myself. So it's just one of those fun kind of tricks you can do to help give that kind of finished, finished look. Isn't that cute? Kind of looks like a sticker, huh? Yours will look almost exactly like this. And you'll look at it and be like, I did that. Yes, you did. Outlines go in. Oh my, we finished that right quick. Oh, I like these pens. So now, same idea. We're going to add some highlights with a white pen. Yeah. And also, you know, because the, uh, the skin of a lemon has a t kind of has that sort of bumpy pebbled look, we're going to add a few white dots and then maybe just some highlights here and there and some squiggles, a little highlight here and there on the leaves. dots there for the pink. So we'll just kind of come in and get some of these leaves while I'm here. We add some pebbles on this section, just the little dots to kind of, again, simulate the shape of the skin. Can't 
see that. I'll bring it up for a second again so it's a little bit more obvious. Turn my light. Can you see that kind of highlighting in there? It just really makes it pop. Well, hopefully you can see it better than I can on camera. But it adds a lot of, whoopsie, it adds a lot of whimsy. Butt dots, I guess, highlights, whatever we call them. on the leaves. I feel like I have this guy the dots on this side. Wow. That goes so fast. How fun is that? So the design is pretty much completed except for the words welcome. And again we will just grab a basic filbert. So instead of a, a fully flat brush, this one has got kind of a curved end on it. I'm just grabbing some lamp black. Oops. Paint booger. Wet my hands off. So I don't get this all over everything. I'll just go in and get it done, right? I'm going to start with the fat parts first. But this should apply pretty quickly. And again, I've already got those black lines in, so I just need to kind of respect them, stay mostly within them to get those words in. And once we've got the word painted, we can then attach with a staple gun if you have one. Um, we can attach like something to hang it and then you can watch me completely fail at making a bow because me and bows, we, we don't live on the same planet. I can go to a dollar store and buy a ribbon and then it just sits in a, a bag for like a year. So we might be raiding my fabric, my, uh, my, my ribbon stash from like years ago. Full disclosure, I didn't really buy anything. I just was like, oh look, I got something that's kind of in the right colors. Let's do it. Back in there really quick. And it's okay if it's a little bit waggly. It will look way more and done that way. I don't want anyone thinking you bought this at Walmart. You want it to be so cute, all your neighbors want to take it, right? Yep. Alright, so let me see. Can I make this thing? No, okay, I'm good. a little bit and so I know we had a couple of votes for different ideas last night I figured if I went around and designed a different word for this last night no I never would have gotten this done today so I figured I'd just take the welcome that I already had and plop that sucker in so we could actually get on air and finish this Even if we hit full finish tonight, I will probably seal it before I hang it up outside. In general, I prefer the, it's like the Helmsman, um, oh, what is it? It's not polycrylic, something else. Let's go grab a batch of it. Uh, polycrylic's also not bad. Whatever it is, you just want to make sure that you seal it and uh, make sure that you seal both sides. Hey, Marsha. If you don't seal both sides, it will warp. Well, it will still warp at some point, um, but it'll warp a lot more evenly if both sides are sealed at about the same time. 
Um, so even if you don't paint the other side, which you, know, you totally could, um, seal it. Because otherwise, you know, the moisture gets in one side and one side expands more than the other. And then you get this horrible warping and then it's way less pretty. All right, let's see if we can get this going. So again, if you guys are interested, let me know. I do have a traceable design for this. And it was not the design that was a problem. My printer was just being cranky. Um, so you can comment in the text if you want it. And we'll make sure you can get it. I also have, if you're local to the Montclair, Virginia area, I also have a number of rounds and can pull together a full kit for you if you like. Although I might let you pick your own ribbons because, um, yeah, we've already determined I don't have very good taste in ribbons. Yeah. I found myself like, oh, you know, why don't I have buffalo plaid? I've got like big fat red, black and red stuff, but no black and white you know ribbons and me we're from different planets we'll figure it out all right this is coming along a couple of spots that i didn't get perfect or filled in and i'm okay with that i might just go with it and call it handmade so i feel like i've got a couple spots on my brush where i have excess paint so that's why I keep going to some of these fat or wider parts is to see if I can offload a little bit of that paint before coming back in and getting, getting the skinnier areas. Just kind of working with the brush from where it is. Happy Friday, Marsha. How you doing? You got any good projects planned? Anything fun you're making this weekend? daughter has a soccer tournament all weekend so we'll be racing all over the DC area to soccer fields and just trying to stay warm got all this high wind coming in and the temps are dropping so I take out my big puffy my puffy I'm a wimp jacket and bundle up in that but I tell you when you're sitting out on the field like in a chair not moving or you know moving your mouth because you're cheering it gets cold quick Whereas like all the girls are tearing around, getting all hot and sweaty, we're <laughs> wishing we had tents. Oh, this is almost done. I'm so excited. So we'll break out the hair dryer when this is done and just give it a good solid drying. And we'll attach something to the back to hang it. Ideally, we'd use jute. I'm not sure I have jute right now, so I'm just going to use some five something line um, which will be good enough and if I succeed with making a big enough bow maybe the well the paracord that's what it is the 550 paracord if I succeed with a good enough bow no one will see it so I can get away with it I just raided the camping closet I'm like oh there's a thing I can use that Stray bristle. Okay. That stray, oh, that stray bristle wants to be there. Okie dokie. Okay. There we go. Let's stick it on a little bit light over here. So, again, you know, if you're interested in an art kit, let me know. Um, I have spare paint pens, um, the fat ones, obviously I can pull together some paint, I've got rounds, I can even print you the, the design tracer and if you want the, whatchamacallit, the uh, carbon paper to go with it, 
I just have small carbon papers right now, but that was really all it took. All right, that, my friends, is our welcome sign. How cool is that gonna be on the front door? I'm so excited to hang this. I don't know about you, I'm excited.